सो हेलो एंड वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू अवर चैनल इंट्रो में क्वेर वी डिस्कस अबाउट बेसिक मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग कॉन्सेप्ट्स सो गाइस व्हेनेवर वी डिजाइन सम काइंड ऑफ मशीन और एप्लीकेशन वी वाइडली यूज द लीनियर एक्चुएटर्स एंड देयर आर डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ एक्चुएटर्स अवेलेबल अकॉर्डिंग टू द एप्लीकेशन सो वी शुड नो व्हाट आर दीस डिफरेंट टाइप्स व्हाट इज देयर वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल व्हाट आर देयर एडवांटेजेस व्हाट आर देयर डिसएडवांटेजेस सो दैट इट बिकम्स easier for us to select the proper linear actuator so today we will see what are the different actuators and their applications so without wasting time let's get started so there is one consolidated uh site on which i have found this so i will drop the link below in the description so pneumatic cylinders so today we will focus on what are pneumatic cylinders what are their types components right so we will be focusing on these three parameters only so let's first check out what are the pneumatic cylinders now we all know and we widely use these cylinders so they have some outer body and then there is a rod inside uh, this body and we call it as at as a pneumatic cylinder because the working fluid in this is air and with the help of air we get the required speed of the rod and forces what are the basic components of this cylinder we have the tube in which the piston rod and piston is associated then we have a end cap then we have a head and then there are lot of internal o rings and seals are also there now this is the piston and this is the piston rod so many times people get confused between what is piston rod what is uh, piston so this is what the piston and uh, piston rod is and whenever you select a pneumatic cylinder so it has always been mentioned with the help of its bore and stroke so bore is nothing but the idea of this tube in which we have the rod uh, so the piston size is slightly lesser than the tube size uh, as it has to you know slide inside this tube so when we say as a bore as a 50 so that means the id of this a uh, cylinder is 50 mm and then we have a stroke according to our requirement then we have tie rod rods of a pneumatic cylinder like a tie rod pneumatic cylinder you can see so these rods are for uh, impact and shock so to protect the cylinder from impact and shock so if you are using the cylinder in such situation we can go with the option of uh, tie rods to the cylinder now let's begin the types of pneumatic cylinder the most important and basic thing is double acting cylinder many people get confused between what is double acting cylinder right so when we say double acting cylinder you can see the pictures below so these are the cross sections so we have a pump flow from one side we have a piston and a piston rod so and then we have a another port which is the exit port now in case of double acting cylinder we pass the fluid on both the sides when we require the extension row we pass the pneumatic fluid on the piston side and because of the force the rod moves forward that is nothing but the extension stroke and at the same time the air from the rod side gets exhausted from this other stroke on the contrary when we want the return stroke what we do is we switch the valves the directional valves and we pass the air from a uh, piston rod side and the air gets exhausted from piston side and the we get the return stroke so uh, we are using the air on both the uh, directions uh, so that's why it is called as a double acting uh, cylinder and the forces on both the strokes will be different you can see the areas are different so this is also one thing that in case of uh, uh, this type of uh, cylinders uh, a single rod cylinder uh we do not get the constant forces for both the strokes then then we have a single acting pneumatic cylinder now here you could see there is a spring and with the help of spring we achieve one stroke and with the help of a pressurized air we achieve uh one stroke so this is called as a single acting but many people don't know that even if the cylinder is single acting it has two ports one is the vent so that is nothing but a simple hole because when you pass the fluid on one side the air from the spring side should be exhausted right otherwise it, it will not get compressed so it will have two uh, holes one is like a pressure port and one is vent so that is also important now we have to 
different subtypes in single acting cylinders one is push type and pull type and whenever you select going to select the cylinder you have to select whether you want to push type or pull type now depending on the application uh, you can see in case of push type the home condition the uh, rod is at uh, return stroke and spring is on rod side so whenever you supply the air to piston side what happens is the piston compresses the spring the piston moves forward and that's how we get the forward stroke so in case of push type we are pushing the uh, piston against the spring and at home position uh, we are at retracted uh, position so retracted position is the home position for push type now you can see on the bottom side <clears throat> on so so th this th this is the spring now in case of pull type you can see the spring is on the piston side and at the home position because of the spring force the piston rod is at extended position so normally uh, the piston rod will be in extended position unless and until we provide the air it will be in extended position now when we want it to be retracted we will pass the air on piston rod side and then it get uh, it forces the piston uh, rod against the spring force and we get the retracted stroke so in case of pull type the cylinder is always at extended position so this is kind of a difference between them but whenever you select uh, the pneumatic cylinder there is an option and you need to be careful then we have rodless pneumatic cylinders and whenever we require uh, cylinders but we have a uh, space limitations then these come into the picture so as name suggests these are rodless pneumatic cylinders so we do not see the rod then we have different types in that like a band cylinders cable cylinders so band cylinders you might have seen these type of a cylinders so uh, on the top you can see one mounting plate on which we directly attach uh, the part which we want to move so it is directly coupled with the piston inside the structure and we do not see any rod so that's why it is called as a rodless pneumatic cylinder there are also different types in these also depending on your size and application then we have cable cylinders you can see there is a cable a lm rail and some pulley like thing so it is guided in that and it moves with the help of the lm rail and the cable that's why it is called as a cable cylinders then we have magnetically coupled cylinders these are now special type of cylinders and are used in special applications so what happens is we have strong magnets inside the bore and when piston moves these because of the strong magnetic field uh, there is no leakage so whenever the application needs to be very tight uh, very leak proof then we should use these type of cylinders let's say you are designing some pneumatic cylinder inside the vacuum chamber so there should not be any leakage of air inside the chamber otherwise your vacuum level will drop now depending on the uh, different type size and you have different configurations of magnetically coupled rodless cylinders then so you can see uh, the piston moves between the strong magnets and because of that we get the leak proofness or a tight joint so this is the main advantage of this one that's why it is called as magnetically coupled then we have air hydraulic cylinders as name suggests it uses both air and oil so whenever we require some high forces uh, within say small size we use these kind of cylinders these are also called as pneumo hydraulic or hydro pneumatic cylinders so we get the first uh, let's say if you have a 200 mm stroke we get 180 mm stroke as a fast forward stroke with the help of air and at the last 20 mm the oil comes into picture and it gives uh, the main working power stroke so you can see the oil forces the working piston to produce the power stroke so uh, these are also widely used when you require large amount of uh, forces so th this is a good uh, solution instead of using complete hydraulic uh, cylinders you can go with air hydraulic uh, cylinders 
because the maintenance cost is also less if you go for complete hydraulic cylinders then the cost is high in the multi force multiplying pneumatic cylinders as the name suggests we get the force multiplied within the compact uh, size you can see there are different uh, it's like different cylinders connected in a series then we have rotary cylinders and uh, these are like uh, uh, when you require some angular motion the rotary cylinders are used then we have tandem cylinders you can see uh, like two different cylinders combined together to form a series of uh, cylinders which gives the uh, high, highest force high force so multiplying cylinder and has two pistons connected in single rod which supply twice the force so that's how this tandem cylinder is useful in compact size you can get larger forces right so you can see the construction the there are two pistons which are connected by the rods and then we have telescopic pneumatic cylinders now in uh, telescopic cylinders different uh, tubes are fitted one inside another and these are very helpful when we require exceptionally long strokes so these are called as telescopic cylinders and uh, as i said these are useful for exceptionally long stroke so whenever we require a huge force in a compact size we can go uh, with let's say tandem cylinders as we discussed because in case of tandem uh, cylinders we we get a large force in compact space and when we require larger strokes in compact space we can go with telescopic cylinders then we have through rod cylinders you can see the picture the rod is coming out from both the sides that is it is through and uh, the advantage is we get the constant force on both the directions as there is a rod on both the sides then there are some uh, different type of cylinders also depending on their operating uh, conditions so we have like rack and pinion cylinders so this is kind of a operating mechanism we have in actuators so these are the basic main type of actuators which you should know uh, how they function what are their uses and what are their applications so with this uh, I hope you guys understood the different type of cylinders what are their applications and uh, you can use uh, the these with your designs you can think like what is the requirement in the design and according to that you can select your uh, linear actuator so this is it guys for our today's session and if you have any doubts please do write into the comment section and we can discuss over there until then keep intro making thank you for your patient listening thank you